Father, we lift our hands, we lift our eyes, but more so, as David says, we lift our soul. We lift it up to you this morning as we come in this agreement, as we are at this strategic time of the year, where we may be in the middle of the year, but God, in the middle, there are some things that are happening. There are things that are happening right now in the middle. So many, so many of us are in the middle of a situation. We may be in the middle of a, 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 a trial, in the middle of a battle, but God is in the midst of us. And he's in the midst of us for a purpose, amen. And Father, this morning as you take over this meeting and you have already started with the first song that was uttered from this altar, to every hallelujah, to every praise the Lord, let the people lift their hand and say glory to God, amen. I've come to speak the word of God in your ear, amen. I've come to tell you the word of God is real, hallelujah. And this morning, as I, I'm grateful and I'm thankful that exactly one year ago, I was on this pulpit. Amen. Amen. One year ago. And do you believe that God orchestrates things for his people? Amen. How many believe in the plans of God? Can I see you here? Amen. How many believe that God still guides, provides, and leads his people? Amen. Amen. He not only guides and provides, he abides. Amen. Amen. How many know he's living with you, dwelling with you, moving with you, abiding in you? Amen. Got a good word for you this morning. I thank God for the man of God that God has given the vision. Pastor Amar, who I've had, been at the forefront of this ministry and trying all his best to get God's people to a place where they could be sealed and approved by God. Amen. Amen. So, Pastor, we give God thanks for you this morning. Don't have much time to speak on me. I just want to get in the word. How many just want to get in the word? Amen. 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 This morning, about two, this morning I had this, you know, sometime when you, when you excite yourself with the word of God, a lot of people aren't really excited about God anymore. They're excited about what God can do for them. They're excited about what they can get from God. But how many are excited about just him? Amen. 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 I'm so excited about the word. Amen. So one of the things we're going to talk about is uh, there are many areas, but we go straight to the Word of God. Can you abide with me to the book of, turn with me, sorry, to the book of Ephesians chapter 1. Hallelujah. We're going to just start there as the Lord will have me. Ephesians chapter 1, and if you have it, you say amen. amen. Thank you. And we read from verse 13. In whom, verse 13, in whom he also trusted, after that you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you, you, that you believed, somebody say believed. believed, after you believed, you were sealed it. Amen. Are you hearing me? He says you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm just excited about this for you. Amen. Amen. The theme this morning is I'm sealed and I'm shielded. Amen. Amen. Somebody lift your hand and says I'm sealed. Amen. I'm sealed Amen. by the Holy Spirit. I am sealed you see, they live in a world, my friend, that we got to get this in our spirit. I don't want to get too excited because I want you to turn to first, uh, Second Corinthians chapter 2 and where we will take another uh, word that has been very profound in my mind. Second Corinthians chapter 1 and it says here, verse 20, For all the promises of God in him are yes. And in him, amen. amen. And the glory of God by us. Now he which established us with you in Christ had anointed us. Somebody say amen. amen. Has God anointed us? Amen. Are you anointed this morning? Amen. Are you anointed with the Spirit this morning? Amen. amen. And verse 22. Who had also sealed us. And had given the earnest of the spirit of 
in our hearts. Amen. When the Spirit of God begins to, to, to grow a church, when a church begins to become yielded to the Word of God, to the, to the Spirit of God, we recognize certain things. Somebody say amen. amen. You recognize when the Spirit of God is moving. Can you recognize when the Spirit of God is moving? Yes. How many could stand and say, listen, I know when the Spirit is moving. Yes. I know. And it's not because I feel something, but I know that I know that the Spirit of God is moving. Amen. Yes. And there is a disconnect with a lot of times because a lot of times when the Holy Spirit, when Holy Spirit takes over, I'm trying to be a teacher here this morning. When the Holy Spirit takes over, Changes will take place. Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit takes over. He breaks barriers. He heals diseases. He releases you. Amen. Into the place. Hallelujah. Where the natural cannot do. But the supernatural is. Hallelujah. And the church today. Hallelujah. When we become part of that. You know. We, we hear people say. Oh what a change in my life. Oh what a change in my life. How many can say what a change in your life. Amen. Are there any Holy Spirit people here who love the Lord, who are, who are not just sitting on, on, a, on a, a anticipation? He says he had sealed you. He's not going to seal you. You are sealed. Amen. Yes, yes. Amen. Can, can we go a little deeper in the word of the Lord? No one can live a Christian life without the Holy Spirit. You could never live a Christian life. You could never have any. Uh, without the Holy Spirit, it is impossible to live this life. Amen. Amen. To please God. Am I talking to you? Amen. Amen. And there is a lot of Christians today. They have somehow or the other has tried to put Holy Spirit aside and to do their own thing. Amen. Am I talking to you? Amen. We just figure that we, we will need him as a, uh, when we feel that we need him. But the Holy Spirit, if you read in the book of Genesis, as I go a little deeper, in Genesis chapter 1 and in verse 2, you will see a great uh, demonstration of where Holy Spirit comes from. Amen. It says, in the beginning was the word, uh, agree with me, and in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And verse 2 says what? And the earth was without what? And boy, and can, can you could you just keep reading with me? And no, we jumped there, man. We gotta stay. No, verse three, man. Verse two, verse two. We read in verse two. The earth was without form, and vo thank you for helping me. And darkness was upon the face. Read again. I, I, want you to, I want you to just lift your hands at this part and says, and the spirit of the Lord is moving. Amen. The spirit of the Lord is moving in spite of the darkness, in spite of the emptiness, in spite of the void, in spite of whatever you are. You cannot stop God from moving. Amen. The Holy Spirit moves Without the necessary tools that we needed to move with. Amen. We don't need to prompt the Holy Spirit. He moves. Amen. We have manipulated and extrapolated our senses. The Bible says the earth was with a form and void. So one question I asked, one tip, where did the water come from? Because God has created the water, but water was on the earth. You read that? You see that? Where did the water come from? Amen. The earth was with a form and void and darkness on the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the waters. Could we all say amen? amen. amen. The word God there is introduced. In the word of, when we read the book of Genesis, we are introduced to a plural form of God. Can I say that to you? Amen. We are not speaking of a singular. The word that you read in the scriptures comes from the word God, comes from what? Elohim, Amen. where it's plural. Amen. Amen. 
which tells us that there is, a, and a lot of people have problem with this, but I'm bold about it. I believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Could you lift your hand and say, praise the Lord. I believe in Elohim. Hallelujah. And he's one. And the Spirit was moving. Amen. So the spirit moving on the water, the spirit was moving, and darkness was all around. If you, if you know a little deeper, and we go into a little bit, if you don't mind, I could wander a little bit here. It was the spirit of God, the water. If you know scriptures, water is where life comes from. All the life comes from the water. Are you hearing me? And the spirit of God was shielding, sealing up. Amen. Keeping the darkness out, amen. Because out of the water, life shall come, amen. Are you there with me? He was sealing, shielding. No darkness could come through the water. Because the Bible says when God kicked out the devil out of the heavens and he came to the earth, he became known as a prince of darkness. So long before man was created, the devil was around. He was looking for some way to inhabit. He was looking for some place to stay. But the spirit of the Lord was here. Yeah, amen. I wish the church will have some spirit people lift their hand and say, even when I don't know, when I don't know, and everything is empty and void, God has protected you from your day one. God has protected you from your childhood, from your situation, from your neighborhood. You were going to school and the Spirit of God was shielding you and sealing you up. Amen. You didn't even know. Didn't stop the Holy Spirit from moving. He move on your behalf. Amen. Can we go a little deeper a little bit? In 1 John chapter 5. John is given at verse 8. 1 John chapter 5 verse 8. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm just gonna... And there are three that bear witness on the earth. Somebody say amen. Three that bear witness on the earth. What is this? The spirit. Notice. Notice. It's just alignment. If you know your Bible, it's just alignment. First the spirit, then the water, and then the blood. Somebody say amen. amen. Ooh, come on. Church, are you there with me? The spirit, let me give you a little deeper in life. People say, when does a baby, Pastor wrote a book on uh, abortion and stuff I heard last week. But when does, people think that, when does life come? Into the womb. At conception, right? But what is born there? Is it a human or is it a spirit being? Amen. Because you have to be very careful. The first thing was spirit. We are a spirit born in water, then comes the blood. Amen. You got to go a little deeper with me. Somebody say hallelujah. The spirit, the water, and the blood. Are you seeing that in the Bible? The spirit is what gives you the life. The blood is what protects the life. Amen. So the spirit, the water, and the blood. Somebody said to me, say the spirit. All are sealing me up. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. The, the spirit seals me. The blood seals me. The water seals me. And I'm, I'm sealed by the blood. Amen. I wish you'd lift your hand and say, I'm triple sealed right now. So much. I got sealed by the Spirit. I got sealed by the water. I got sealed by the blood. Amen. Hallelujah. Shout it out to somebody. Say, I'm triple sealed. Amen. I'm sealed by the Spirit. I'm sealed by the water. I'm sealed by the blood. Amen. There's some things that I can't preach, but some of you are catching to give God the praise. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Jesus. This is how many, many take, make take off of the word seal. And um, I, can, I trust that you are intelligent enough to know that a seal is used for many uh, contexts. On the word seal, they have the word seal for uh, what? For guarantee, authentic things, ownership, royalty. Come on, somebody, amen. 
A seal has so many uh, things, but in the days of old, people seal things so that it could be official. Amen. Can you get me the amen? amen? Somebody say official. official. When you are in the spirit, born again of the, of the blood, washing the blood, baptized with the water, somebody say, I made it official. Amen. amen. Did you get what I'm saying? Amen. amen. You can't come to church and sit in church and don't make it official. How many of the spirit makes it official? Hallelujah. Come on. Amen. Wave your hand and say Hallelujah. Some people, they are still on the peripheries of not sealed as yet. They're just figuring it out. Amen. So I want to read this for you in context of the first time the word Holy Spirit came together in the book, uh, in the Old Testament, because I like to project the Old Testament before I go to the New. It was found in uh, Psalms 51. And David had an inkling of the Spirit of God. And he says in Psalm 51 verse 11, he says, Take not. Then it, it, it says, cast me from the presence and take not thy what? He joined the two together. First time, he says, take not the Holy Spirit. He didn't want to lose his authenticity. He doesn't want to lose his certification from heaven. He didn't want to lose that seal that he had. Amen. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy now, if you go a little low down, we got three words that the Holy Spirit is. He says, the Holy Spirit is a free spirit. Is he a free spirit? Amen. Let me read again. Restore me the cast me from, and take not the Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the. Somebody say, the Holy Spirit makes me free. Amen. <laughs> Come on, church. You got it. It's, it's a free spirit. When you have the Holy Spirit, you don't care who look at you and where. You are free to lift your hand. You are free to praise the Lord. You know you are certified. You know God is backing you up. You don't care who said what. You are certified by God. Amen. You have a free spirit. You're no longer intimidated. You're no longer feeling what they're saying. You are certified by God. Amen. Holy Spirit, give me a free spirit. Come on, church. When the Holy Spirit is in the life of a believer, he's no longer intimidated. He's no longer afraid of what they will say or do. He's walking in certification, authenticity. He's walking in the relationship that God is backing him up. Amen. Lift your hand and say hallelujah today. But somebody said, when you got the Holy Spirit, they can't touch you. Amen. When you got a seal, it believes, God said, that belongs to me. That is mine. She's mine. You can't touch this one. I certify him. I put my seal on him. I put my spirit on him. I have placed something upon him that the devil can't touch. Amen. Give him praise and glory. Hallelujah. Sickness can't touch. Hallelujah. The Lord has kept you. Amen. Reserve you and preserve you. You are sealed and shielded. Come on, somebody, give him praise and glory, hallelujah. I'm sealed and shielded. In this hour I'm living in, amen. I'm sealed by God. I'm shielded by God. I can go through fire and not be burned. I can go through flood and not drown. I can go through the storm because he's with me, hallelujah. Are you feeling anointed? Say, when the spirit moves, amen. Lift your hand and says, I'm sealed and shielded by the Holy Spirit. Come on, guy. I challenge you to tell the enemy out loud. Use a vocal cord. Say, devil, you can't touch me. I'm sealed and I'm shielded. God has kept me through a process. God has held me through the storm. God has sealed me. I'm not going to drown. I'm not going to go down. This time, the world will know. He's on my side. Hallelujah. He's kept me. Hallelujah. For a purpose. He's kept me for a reason. He's kept dearly for a purpose. Through the COVID, he sealed you. Through the COVID, he shielded you. When death angel were passing, the blood, the spirit, and the word was over. You give him praise and glory. Hallelujah. He was 
Yeah, amen. Glory to God. God told her, God said, Noah, God said, Noah, I'm about to do something on the earth. And I'm going to want you to have an assignment for you. What's your assignment? Build an ark. I want to say clearly for some people who do not get this, God did not say build a boat. He didn't say build a ship. He said build an ark. An ark is not, a ship is to take you to travel through the water. An ark is for floating. Somebody say hallelujah. The ship will go through. A ship to sink. I can't sink. The ark was built for flotation. I'm not hearing somebody here today. I wish somebody hear my message here this morning. Lift your hand and say, when the spirit is moving, they can't stop. They can't stop when the Lord is talking. Amen. So here is the dimension I want you to build. I want you to build an ark, not a boat. We get it wrong. Not a ship. God wants you to build an ark. Amen. It was like a chest with layers in it. It was simplified to the Ark of the Covenant and all these things. It was a square box, amen. amen. But God has designed that box to float. He said, I want you to do something now. I want you, when you build this ark and you finish, I want you to find some pitch. And I want you to seal it from the inside and then go and seal it from the outside. Come on, somebody, Hallelujah. So that which is in inside will be preserved. The life will be preserved. Now let me give you something. If you all don't know a little bit about it. That go for wood that your Lord said to use was this light wood. It could be floated. Amen. Somebody. Somebody just. I, I, I wish I could stop here and just say. Thank God some of you have a light spirit. In a heavy world. In a heavy job. Some of you in heavy places but you're still light in your feet. Give God a praise. Hallelujah. You are still carrying the presence of God. Hallelujah. Now, when, when he said to use the pitch, well, Trinidad have a pitch lake. I don't know if the ark was built close here, but I'm just saying. Don't know. <laughs> but there is a part of the pitch that it says to use. But here's the thing. That wood, it had to remain out for a little while in the ark, and it had worms and little creatures would attack the wood. Therefore, the pitch was there to preserve it so the Nothing could bite into it. Nothing, no worm could eat it. Nothing could live inside there. Come on. Am I getting somebody here? When God put his spirit on you and the water on you and the blood, nothing come and live inside of you. No devil can kind of bite into your flesh. If somebody say hallelujah. If you're catching it, say hallelujah. Lift your hand and say no devil can penetrate this. If you it, the termites can't bite in. Uh, the worm, the gang, the, the, the caterpillar can't come in. Somebody say hallelujah. I'm speaking by the revelation of the Lord to you. You are sealed. Somebody lift your hand and say, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the enemy, when the enemy, when the worms uh, come upon me to eat up my flesh. Uh, he have a seal and a shield. Hallelujah. Give me praise and glory. Hallelujah. I'm sealed uh, and I'm shielded uh, by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. You can't eat this. As Job said, how many in loving the word of God this morning? But yourself, but yourself said, this is sealed by God. This is shielded. God preserves this. Amen. We go a little deeper. If, if the church could just get this message in the right way, oh, we're going to have a, a church that is invincible. Amen. Sometimes I have to tell people, stop looking for God and start knowing God in your life. You can't, you can know about God. But it takes the Holy Spirit to know God. Because he and the Father is one. Amen. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot know nothing. He is known as the Spirit of truth. And when he shall come, he will guide you into all truth. Amen. He will bring you up to speed of what's happening in heaven. Amen. I wish I could just look at, lift my voice and say, I got inside information uh, 
That outside world don't know, amen. Something deep inside of me telling me, go on. Something deep inside of me saying, you can't give up. Something deep inside of me saying, hey, I know it's all against you, but I'm on your side. Something deep inside is shouting, it's over for the devil, amen. How many can hear that voice right now? Lift your hand and say, something down inside of me. Someone, not something, but someone is telling me, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Someone is telling me, hallelujah, there are a thousand around me or ten thousand. I am with you in this, hallelujah. How many, how many enjoying this word? Amen. Romans 8, 26, quickly, read this with me. This is what the Holy Spirit do. When you can't figure out, when you're going through your darkest time, he seals you and he shields you, but he also guides you. He, you may not even know what to say. Read this, likewise, the Spirit also helps it our... By the what? Make it intercession for us with groanings which cannot be... You may... You may, natural people may hear me groaning, but in my spirit I'm rejoicing. You may hear somebody, and if you don't know them, you have, oh. or you, you may think that, hey, they are in pain. No, they are gaining in the spirit. Hallelujah. You are, natural man cannot understand the spiritual man. Amen. Lift your hand, church. Come on, you know. Come on, lift your hands. You know what I'm talking about. When everybody says hallelujah, when the spirit takes over, your prayer language change. When the spirit takes over, your mouth change, your dance change, your, de your design of your life changes. Hallelujah. He is leading you. Amen. He helped our infirmities. He also helps you in that moment of weakness. Somebody come on with me. Somebody help me here to the situation. How many believe that sometimes you, have you ever been in a situation where you are, you don't know what to say, but you want to talk to God, and all of a sudden, you realize a different voice coming out of you? Have you ever prayed a prayer that was not from you? Come on, somebody. Have you ever had to say a prayer that you know it was not you praying, but God praying through you uh, in the circumstance? Am I talking to you? Amen. I said to the musicians, have you ever played a tune that you know that you didn't learn? Have you ever played a tune that you know it was not your fingers, but it was his fingers moving on the system? Am I talking to anybody? Because he doesn't walk beside me. He lives inside of me. Somebody shout, greater is he that is in me. Amen. The spirit help it all in front. I don't know where people get this from, but when we make problems, this is a myth or lie from the devil. It says to us, and Jesus says in John 14, he was revealing the Holy Spirit in a more deeper sense of the knowledge. And he was able to add some very powerful words together. And if you turn to John chapter 14, you will say that he, he's given a promise to the Spirit. Are we going somewhere here this morning? Yes. Hallelujah. In John chapter 14, I'm just going to go quickly. It says, in one of the most powerful uh, stands of the scripture, he says, um, <clears throat> I'm just going to get some scripture. 16, 17, and 18, thank you. Read verse 16. And I will pray that what? So, so, can we stop there a little bit? And let me just fix something. Can we fix something a little bit? Do you believe that the Spirit of God, when that promise is real? That God promised to let His Spirit dwell with us forever? Because if you read in the book of Genesis, it says that when God saw the wickedness of man and the evil that was upon the earth, in the Old Testament, he said, my spirit shall not always dwell with me. I ain't going to walk with flesh anymore. I can't stand it anymore. Do you remember that? Therefore, he says, I will destroy all flesh. Amen. Because his spirit cannot dwell with flesh. Amen. Because the flesh had become corrupted and gone their own way. And the very imagination of the thought was evil and evil continually. I mean, you hear the word of God. You know I'm talking the truth. Amen. So God says, I'm going to put a limit because my spirit, as long as my spirit there, there's going to be life. And if I'm going to leave my spirit on the earth, they're going to live on in evil. So I can't give them my spirit because they are living in evil. So I'm going to cut them short. So I give them 120 years. Then I go down to 80. And then, you know what I'm saying? So the, so the connection between life and living depends on the spirit of God. But then Jesus comes in the picture. 
And he's speaking a new language. Somebody say a new language. Let not your heart be troubled. You don't have to be worrying about a long life. I'm bringing eternal life. Come on, amen. You don't have to be worrying about earthly life. I'm bringing heavenly life. Come on, hallelujah. You don't have to be worrying about who can bury you. They can bury you because the life of God is in you. Amen. Uh, don't study about burial when I bring in revival. Give him praise and glory. Hallelujah. Don't worry. Because in the Old Testament and in some of your religion, most of you are, who will bury me? The father, who could, who could shave their head? Who could cook the food? Uh, when your shell is gone, it will still be well with you. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. So Jesus is going to give us a very powerful. So here's the thing about people, and it's a lie from hell, and I'm going to tell you that because Jesus says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. That changed my life. Because I've been taught when I'm going through, when you have the most difficult and you fall and you go through problems, people say, the Spirit of God left you. He have abandoned you. Have you ever heard people say that to you? You make your mistakes and they say, oh God, and they preach it into your spirit. You, you better come back to God. You've left. And, and my Bible says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Even though you are a million miles away in your mind, I'm right there. Just a prayer away. Amen. I want to correct this, if you will, permit me, and I don't care because I have a seal on God in my life. Stop letting the devil lie to you. God will not leave you. Even though you fall, he'll be right there to pick you up. If you believe, I say hallelujah. Come on. Lift your hand and say, I've got a mediator. I've got an advocate. I've got the Holy Spirit. I've got him, hallelujah, in my life. And the moment I tap back in the Holy Spirit, he restores me, amen. He's my sh- How many believe that this one? Lift your hand and say hallelujah. Say, he will never leave me. He will never forsake me. Even when you reject yourself, God hasn't rejected you. Even when you feel that you are the lowest of the low, he's right there to lift you up. Because he said, I will never leave you comfortless. Amen. But they want a deeper revelation on this. Can we go a deeper revelation on this? Let's look at the first Adam. The first Adam had a wife. Her name was Eve. And Eve and Adam were supposed to do things together and walk together and everything. But somehow or the other, Adam and Eve did not have the same sync of the spirit together. So Adam found himself doing great things and Eve found herself wandering around. He was naming animals and she didn't know what to name. He was busy at the office and what was Eve doing? She was just wandering around, having nothing to do. Soap and saw her, enters in a car, hey, 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 what you doing? I'm just here, chilling. I'm just here, relaxing. And the devil says, oh, that's what you're doing? And he started to have a conversation with her. You all know the story. At the end of the day, where was Adam? He was doing something else. Are you there with me? He was in the office naming animals. Or whatever. Are you there with me? And because of that, the first Adam was not walking with his wife. What happened? The serpent came in. We have a second Adam. Somebody say amen. And he also has a wife, a bride actually. Amen. Could I hear somebody say amen? And what the first Adam mistake was, never walk with his bride. The second Adam says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I'm going to be with you every step of the way. Somebody give him praise and glory. I'm not going to let the devil come between us. I'm not going to give the devil a chance to come between us. Somebody say hallelujah. That's why the church must be a spirit-led, spirit-sealer, spirit-guided. Lift your hand and say, hallelujah. Holy Spirit! First Adam did what? He was distanced. The second Adam says, I'm not going to make that mistake with the first Adam make. I'm going to keep, I'm going to be with you even though you feel, uh, especially when that serpent shows up, I'll step in the picture. Amen. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but how many know that there are times in your life that you don't know, but God stepped up for you when the devil showed up, God showed up, amen. 
Somebody say hallelujah. When you were stepping back, God was stepping up and say, hey, sealed it, shield it, can't touch this one. Amen. Give him praise and glory. Hallelujah. There's a future. There's a purpose. There's a reason why. There's a reason why that I have. This one is my bride. Amen. That's why he says, um, you see, the church had to understand we cannot be unoccupied because the Holy Spirit is preparing us to be like the Adam was supposed to be like his wife. The two shall become one. And if the second Adam, we are supposed to be like Christ. Somebody say amen. amen. And we are supposed to have his nature, his ability, and his power. Somebody say hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit is mandated to job to perfect us to come to that place. Could I hear amen? amen. That we will not, when, when the first Adam saw his wife, he says, bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Somebody say amen. When the second Adam sees us, which is Christ, he says, he is a spirit of my spirit. Amen. Bone of my bone. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Amen. We are in a Holy Spirit relationship with the Lord. Amen. amen. You can't join yourself to pilots and prostitutes. You can't go to harlots and prostitutes and have a love relation and come back. You cannot. When, if some of you are going to get a little deep here now. Because if you go out with your heart and you give your heart to the wrong things and you come to church, you are harloting. Amen. Now, now, now I have to use the shield here now. Amen. This is a love relationship with God. Amen. That's why he says the, the bride, he didn't say the bride, no, he didn't say the spirit calling the church in the revelation. He said the spirit and the bride says it was a relation. You know when people go, oh, when you ever get married, whatever, the, the groom side had to invite some. And the bride side had to invite some, amen. And some come in the middle and say, they know where they're coming from. It's so funny in Trinidad, we have some very funny things. And if you're going to eat by the other side and you're invited, you could just say, come from the other side. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But the point is, the spirit and the bride says, it's not a Jesus coming. No, Jesus say, come. When the church begins to take on the identity of being flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone and in the spirit of God, you will have the same language what heaven has in your life. Give it praise and glory. Hallelujah. You will not speak contrary to the word of God. Amen. You will walk in the precepts of God. And you will now speak like how Jesus will speak. Amen. Am anybody hearing this message? Amen. Are we blessed here this morning? Jesus never entered ministry. When Jesus entered ministry, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. I wish somebody lift your hand and says, I'm entering some new part of the new. This is what? This is the 30th. So we go to another half of the Lift your hand and say, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I'm in me. I'm sealed me, shielded me, taking me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish, finish this year stronger than the start. Amen. Don't judge me yet. The Lord is on my side. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Holy Spirit, thank you for the word this morning. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. Very quick scripture verse. And before I get a little deep and I'm going to close. Are we blessed here this morning? The seal has to be triple seal. Read with me if you can. And the very God of peace sanctify you. And I pray that your what? Your what? That your what? Let me stop there. Because a lot of people in your church, even right now, they're just giving me a little. How many when you have your whole spirit into something? You know what I'm saying to you? You ever put your whole heart into something? Have you ever put all your eggs in one basket? I got all my eggs in a Jesus basket. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Amen. Some of you still have a little, little backup plan in case Jesus didn't come true. In case the pastor can do it. In case this one, you have a little, but in the case of it, you have to put your whole heart in this. Fully persuaded. Fully persuaded. And the very God of peace. Notice the Old Testament was a God of war. In the new covenant, he's a God of peace. Lift your hand and say hallelujah. 
I'm, I'm finding a little thing in the church here because a lot of people here, they love the Old Testament. I'm glad you do, but the Bible says that the covenant is void and empty. The New Testament is a new covenant. It's a new way to understand God. Amen. Walk in the light as he is in the light. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Walk in the light, meaning walk in the revelation that he has given us so you will have fellowship one with another. Hallelujah. Because you can't walk in darkness and expect to walk in light. Amen. And the very God of peace sanctify you holy. Somebody say, and I pray, God, your what? Soul be I know only what you mean there, but that terrifies the devil. Satan can't touch you. Can't touch your body. Can't touch your soul. Can't touch your spirit. Because when Jesus did a work on the cross, it's called the finished work of Christ. Amen. His blood, his spirit. First, first he did like this. He gave, when out of his sight came what? Water and blood. And then he came back and says, now I give you my spirit. How many of you know we got the spirit? We got the water. We got the blood. Church, if you, are, if you are in this place right now, can you hear the word of God telling you right now that the devil cannot touch you? You lift your hand and say, my whole spirit, my body. I now speak to every spirit that is contrary. The Bible talks about this authority the church has been given that we have not exercised for a while. And I want to do this now because I know that the Lord has timed this well. Somebody say hallelujah. That we have power over all the power of the enemy. And nothing by any means shall hurt you, says the Lord. I have given you power to put the enemy under your feet. Hallelujah. So you got to stand up and say, listen, hallelujah. This word says I'm blameless. Not because I have done any. I have not done any wrong. I became blameless because of the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sin? What can make me whole again? There's power in the blood. Amen. There's power in the blood. Just give me a couple of minutes before you all go up there. This is powerful. Amen. Are you there with me? Amen. Romans. Let me turn to Revelation chapter 7 verse 3. Fast, fast. Let's read it. The seal of God. In the spirit realm, listen carefully. In the spirit realm, God doesn't see your face. He doesn't see your clothes. He doesn't see your... He only sees your spirit. What spirit you have. This is one of the angels speaking. He's saying, hurt not the earth. Neither the sea. Nor the tree. Till. Pastor, you're getting this. You know that. Amen. We know this. We know the church. Tell somebody said, we are sealed. Amen. God says, I'm not going to put no earthquake there. They're going to have no hurricane there until I seal it. It doesn't mean when you are sealed, listen, the earthquake will come now. The fire will come now. But the seal gives you the authority to say, listen, you can't touch this one. Amen. Let's, let's lift our voices and be going to pray this Holy Ghost. I feel an anointing coming upon me to pray for somebody. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16 and 17 says a very powerful word. Keep reading with me before we go. Thank you, brother. Let's pray. That he will grant you to be strengthened. Let me tell you something. I've been preaching a little deep here, but I hope you don't get it. There's no x-ray machine that man has invented to see your spirit. There's no invention by man that can see your spirit. No radiology, no, no CT scan, no, no, no CT scan, no x-ray can see the inner man. Only God's word can see the inner man. I want to heal and let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I've been in the wrong medical field and I've known a lot of this. Some people, they have not a sickness, but they have a spirit 
a spirit of infirmity, meaning that they're always feeling sick. They always feel something wrong is going to happen. Oh, I heard this. I heard. I heard that sister so and so died from cancer, and she was so healthy. And all of a sudden, in your spirit, something hit your spirit, and I, I wonder if I have it too. I don't know if I don't know because she was just the other day. I met her and I spoke to her. And look, if she could have, you gotta understand what the shield is doing today, Amen. What the seal is doing today, Hallelujah. The reason again that He will grant you according to the riches of His glory. Another time we'll preach the riches of His glory to be strengthened. Lift your hand and say, "My strength." Lift your hand and say, "My strength is in the Lord." Come on. Strengthen them, Lord. Strengthen them right now. Lift them up to a new level, Lord, that they will live and they will have. And they will. This church has been strengthened. God is strengthening you with His Word. Every cell in your body, every tissue in your body, every muscle in your body, every organ in your body, every vein in your body, yeah. every, 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 every part of you, uh, in your, from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, uh, begin to experience the healing touch of the Lord. I want to tell you, can you feel? Can you feel the spirit moving right now? I want to bring healing on the church. Come to the altar right now. I'm going to pray a healing prayer over the church right now. Nothing can penetrate this message. Nothing can penetrate this message. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. The guidance of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Lift your hand and worship in the spirit of truth and the spirit of wisdom. Do you believe God has a seal upon you? In the realm of the, you are not lucky. You are not, you're not, you, you are selected, elected, chosen. You have a purpose in your life that the Bible declares, hallelujah, that you will live and not die. You will fulfill that God has for you. You are chosen from your mother's belly. So, you know, when you were in the amniotic fluid and you were swirling in your mother's belly, God tell Jeremiah, I have called you. I have chosen you, Jeremiah. I had a plan for you. Amen. I have put things in place. Hallelujah. Give your hands. Here yeah, it is. Say, I just feel the presence of the Lord over this message. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, blessed Heavenly Father. Thank you for your unconditional love. Thank you, Lord, that I am no longer a carrier of disease. I'm not a carrier of sickness. I'm not a carrier of sin. I'm a carrier of His presence. I carry the presence of God in my life. Come on, call on the Holy Spirit out of you, out of you. Come on. Put your hands on your belly right now. Out of my belly shall flow rivers of living water. Out of your belly shall flow. Open your mouth and begin to speak. I'm healed. I'm delivered. I am healed. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. The Lord has blessed me. The Lord has kept me. I am chosen for such a time like this. The Lord is on my side. The battle is the Lord. But the victory, hallelujah. We have the victory. Say with me. Say, I refuse to be moved by what I feel. Say it again. Say, I refuse to be moved by how I feel. Put your hands on your flesh and say, some days you try to deceive me. Watch your flesh say, some days you tell me that I am well. But now lift your hand and say, but I know in my spirit, in my inner mind, that I have 
the life of God in me. Hallelujah. The life of God is in me. 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 Hallelujah. From the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. The life of God. Find, find, find somebody who you are familiar with and just ask them, can you just hold my hands for a moment? Just say, can you hold my hands for a moment? Yeah. I refuse to accommodate any sickness, disease, and pain in this body. I'm absolutely sure that God doesn't want a sick believer. He wants us all well. Amen. I am fully convinced Ready? Ready? Say with me. Say the same spirit that brought Jesus from the dead. It lives in me. It quickens my mortal body. Say every cell in my body receive the life of God in my life. I will outlive the, the devil's lies I will see the glory of the Lord with mine eyes lift your hand say mine eyes will see glory yeah I will tell the story yeah I will live to tell the story yeah I will live to tell the story yeah I will see the glory of the Lord upon my life bring it up Quick, quick testimony that how God is real. In Trinidad, I pastored a, a pastoring and I had to come here. God brought me. And when I left, a young lady, she was very young. And the mother is very strong, support of my ministry. And when I left, two months after she was struck with cancer. Cancer. That young mother, that, that mother is a widow and her, her daughter is struck with cancer. My wife will be a witness. She called me every day to pray. She's praying. And the doctor says, every time she goes worse, it gets worse and worse and worse and worse. But I keep declaring, I didn't see a graveyard. I didn't see a coffin. I see the glory of God. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Shift your hand. Really. I don't have time. She'll bear witness with me. Two, two days ago, two days ago, she called me. Pastor. So I'm kind of anticipating my spirit. I said, it's all well. Because the last time she said, the doctor said, take your daughter quickly to the hospital. We don't know what's going on. Now I'm hearing, Pastor, I'm going to tell you something. No cancer in heaven. <laughs> Lift your hands. Say, hallelujah. She had no money. She had no fancy doctor. She had no fancy equipment. But she got the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know why? The mother, the daughter may have given up, but the spirit of that mother transferred over to her daughter. You ain't going to die on me. You ain't going to die on me. You're not going to fall apart. The God that I serve is going to keep you. Somebody say hallelujah. Those of you that are strong in the spirit, turn to somebody and say, you ain't going to die on me this time. You ain't going to fail this time. God's going to keep you. God's going to hold you up. I believe for you, amen. I stand in the gap for you, hallelujah. That the Lord is on your side, hallelujah. I believe in God. This is not your end. This is just a bend, amen. This is not the end of the road. God will make a way for us. Somebody say hallelujah. Just do this with me. Just say, I'm sealed by the Holy Spirit. Say, he designed me not to fail, but to live. Come on, hallelujah. I'm a designer original. God designed me not to fail, but to live. 
any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. All things become new. You are designed to fire. You are designed to soar. You are designed to rise up. Hallelujah. You are designed by God not to fail. Failure is not in my vocabulary. Am I talking to anybody here this morning? It's not in my vocabulary. This church is not a boat, not a ship. It's an ark. Give him praise and glory. Hallelujah. I wish I got four people to look around and say, I'm floating on stuff. Amen. I'm just floating around. Amen. I'm just floating around, amen. God's guiding my life. God's keeping me in this time. God's keeping me, hallelujah. How did, it is such a wonderful time. How did you all survive COVID when everybody was just going down? How are you surviving when the bills are high and the money is low? The spirit within you says you can't give up now. I'm keeping you afloat, hallelujah. I'm keeping you that you will not drown. You will not drown. There you go. There you go. Rose. Come on. You can, how can you leave this church? Do you know the Spirit wanted you to hear this message today? How I many you know the Spirit wanted to hear this message today? Put your hands on your forehead, say right here. Put your hands on your forehead and says, my mind is sealed and shielded from every trick of the enemy. Say enemy, I cancel, I nullify every attack on my mind. I have the shield of salvation. I have the shield of faith, somebody. And now say with me, say I heard the word. I received, I received the word. And because I received the word, I'm a true believer, and the Holy Spirit has made this word real to me. Lift your hands high and say, thank you, Lord. I am sealed and shielded from every attack. And give him praise. Hallelujah. Worship the Lord. Go ahead. Amen. Glory. Glory.